This is a little reminder video, mostly for myself, on how I reprogrammed 2000 Blink Ones that had bad firmware. So this is a, the new Blink One Mark II. Um, here it is, depackaged. Now, the cool thing that I was able to do is that four of the five pins needed to reprogram are actually on the USB jack. So those four connections there. The fifth one is right next to it, called P1. You can kind of see next to the Thingam logo. And with those five connections, you can reprogram. Now, I was thinking of doing a pogo pin bed where you just lay it down and that would reprogram it, but I was having problems with that, um, getting any sort of reliability. So instead, I ended up using a USB jack and then a single pogo pin for that P1 fifth connection. And um, this is just connected up to a PIC kit 3, and the USB hub here is providing power since the PIC kit 3 can't supply enough power. So to program, you just stick it into the jack, lay it down. Make sure the pogo pin is engaged, and then you can either hold it down or you can use this calibrated bag of BBs. And then you just run the programmer software, which is MPLAB IPE, and it will program for a little bit. And then it will be done. Well, in that case, it failed. So why did it fail? Oh, am I programming the bad? Try again. There we go. And uh, it takes about 13 seconds. And uh, once you're done, you just remove it and verify that both of the lights are working. And uh, looks like they are. So take it out, put this in the good pile. And with IPE, you can do this thing called SQTP, which is a way of um, having unique flash images for every device. And this is needed for Blink-1 because every Blink-1 has its own serial number. And so if you can see here, there is the SQTP file that's been loaded up, and that contains a list of serial numbers. And that's it. That's how to reprogram 2,000 Blink-1s in a, in a weekend.